Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. I want to continue talking about being a nomad prepper. I mean, as nomads were set up really perfectly to be prepared for bad situations because we could just move away. Uh, and I want to emphasize over and over that I'm not talking about being a, a crazy lunatic, conspiracy theorist guy. I mean, there's nothing wrong with any of that, but I'm talking about being really balanced and mo much more of a community prepper, thinking in terms of being in a community a sur community survival. That's To me, community is what no being a nomad is all about. But I want to talk today uh, specifically about food and building up a food supply. That's really important to me. And one of the reasons I, I got the ambulance was so I could build up a bigger food supply. So just to give you an idea, you might be thinking, well, uh, why should I build up a food supply? Well, there are... <laughs> Man, the new when I'm when I'm shooting this right now, uh, you, Russia is invading UK, Ukraine right now at this very minute, and I don't think it's World War III or the end of the world. Um, it's bad. I mean, when you have uh, dictators who are just rolling into each other's countries, and if we don't do something to prevent that, then China is going to look at that and say, "Well, we'll just start rolling into countries, and other dictators will start." It, it's a it's a bad. Thing. I don't know how it's all going to end up. No one does. Only the future will tell. But my point is, that's not good. And, but that's just one part of it. So the whole political situation, uh, and not just globally, internationally, but United States, I mean, our political situation is grim. I, I really, you know, I hate to say that. Not choosing sides of either party or either idea, but the idea that we can't talk to each other anymore. Whatever your idea, that we can't even have a discussion that doesn't bode well. <laughs> I mean, if you can't even talk to each other, then that's not good. And I'm not. And, and both sides aren't talking to each other. So there's not. I'm not choosing sides in any way, shape, or form. I'm just saying things aren't good. So when you think about the economy, you know, you think the global economy, the local, national economy. What is it built on? Um, uh, you know, we have these supply chain problems, and we have people not going back to work, and the the uh, stock market's at an all time high, and you think. Why is it an all-time high when, when mostly things look bad? Uh, but more than anything else with the economy, you have inflation. Right now, the inflation's running about 6 7%. And, that, and, and they've been saying, oh, well, it's just temporary. They won't keep going. And then now that it go has kept going uh, and is getting worse, they're saying, oh, well, it'll be over real soon. We're going to raise interest rates, which what's going to happen when they raise interest rates uh, from the economy is just barely chugging along and they're going to raise interest rates to bring down inflation. And so I don't know, but the cost, you and I, you're probably watching this video largely because uh, the cost of housing is outrageous. You can't afford the cost of housing. Our cost of living in the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years have steadily gone up and recently they've skyrocketed and our buying power has not kept up. Our, our income, our wages has not kept up. That's why so many of you are watching this video. So, I, you know, I don't have to convince you to think things are questionable. I mean, not, not conspiracy theory, just where's this all going to end? I mean, you just have to think that. And to my mind, the single most important reason you should be thinking about food storage is the climate. Now, as you know, I'm a complete believer in climate change. The science behind it is irrefutable. It's, it's a done deal. Climate change is coming. But, okay, throw that out. Just say that you're crazy, that are all crazy, they're all liars. All those scientists that say that, they're communist liars. Okay, they are. There's a lot of droughts going on. <laughs> okay, but they're all liars. We're given, we're, we're gonna, that's established. That's not gonna happen. But there's a lot of droughts going on. This is the, they're saying this is the, the drought in California is the worst drought in 1,200 years. Uh, and there's the worst fires going on. You and I have been around for a while, and, uh, or I've been around for a while, and I'm telling you that I've never seen fires like this. And the record is clear. There's never been fires like this. That's why it seems like it. Did you know that California produces about half of this nation's uh, fruit and vegetables? And it's the state's on fire and there's no water. But it's not just California. It's all over. It's globally. All over the world, droughts and floods are standard occurrences now. All over. And wildfires. Wildfires like no, the globally we've never seen before. And beyond that, then you have all kinds of things going on. You have uh, snowstorms, <laughs> talking about fires. Ca Colorado, near Denver, had a huge fire that burned 1,000 homes in December. All bets are off about the climate. 
when you've got a wildfire in December in 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 uh, in Colorado near Denver, something's different. Something's happening. So food is going to become a big issue. So uh, to my mind, it's all the cl it's all the climate disasters we're seeing repeatedly. Whatever your politics, I don't care about your politics. I care about your future and your well-being. And I think your future and your well-being should include some food storage. So that's all I'm saying. You know, it's like insurance. You're not a crazy nut if you have insurance on your car. You're not a crazy nut if you want health insurance. You're going to get sick. Uh, you're not a nut if you have an emergency fund. That's just normal human thinking. You're not a nut if I tell you to have three or four months worth of food. Why? Because you can always sit tight and not burn gas. If you break down, you can still sit tight probably. Ride a bike to and from town, but you got to eat. And the food becomes so expensive that you can't afford it. If you're only making $1,000 a month and food now costs you 800 of that, you got a problem. And so I think having some food on hand is just a good idea. Now, having said that, uh, I'm going to show you how I have done it. And this is one method. And my good friend Brian is going to show you another method, which I think most of you should be doing. And the, that method is just buy a, f a few extra. Every time you go to the store, buy a few extra. Now, I had some extra room and some extra money, and so I bought these big bins. And if you have extra room and money, then you might think about these big bins because this is a fantastic way to know that you're going to have food to eat and that you're not going to be eaten alive, uh, pun intended, eaten alive by inflation when it comes to food. You still have to have money in the bank. So what I'm advising you to do this, don't run out. Please don't run out and spend all your money on food and then not have an emergency fund because your car is going to break down. Your van is going to break down. You're going to need some repairs. So don't go out and spend your emergency fund on food. Keep your emergency fund. Add a little bit of food extra as you can as you go along. That is so important. Uh, Augustine Farm is a, uh, and these are all Augustine Farm products, as you can see. And uh, they are a well-known, they're from Utah. And we talked, we've talked in the video before now about how the Mormon religion uh, promotes storage, food storage for every single member. And I, I won't go into all that again, but I believe it's true. And that's part of community uh, prepping. If I have extra, I don't have to go ask someone else and be a burden on someone else. If you have extra, you can help the person who didn't prepare, who couldn't prepare. And that's what I want to be. That's my goal here. And I hope that's your goal. This was $119, 55,000 calories. The reason you should buy this is because it's about the cheapest month's worth of food you can own. If things get a little rough and you have a month where you just don't know how you're going to eat, you have this in your van somewhere, your car somewhere. You've got food for a month at for $119. So this is the cheapest eating you can do. Is it the healthiest eating you can do? No, obviously not. Is it the best tasting eating you can do? No, obviously not. Are you going to live with this and be reasonably happy. It's not terrible stuff. We've actually, I actually have a video that I put out like two or three years ago. We'll put a link to it. Uh, I bought one of these, gave it to a friend and he tested them all and he said, you know, they're not all gourmet, they're not gourmet food, but they're perfectly fine. And if you keep some spices on hand, you can doctor them up and make them pretty darn good. Have 10 pounds of sugar and 10 pounds of salt and pepper and you can turn any of it to pretty good. <laughs> so $119 and that's today. I just looked it up before I, I, uh, I, I shot this video. That's what this costs right now. I really recommend if you have $119 that isn't coming out of your emergency fund, you can afford, go buy this. 55,000 calories, that's 30 days at, at 1,800 calories a day. Personally, I would think in terms of 1,000 calories a day, this is 55 days worth of food. Uh, this has about a 25-year shelf life. That's what they're recommending. And each there's individually packaged uh, foods inside. Uh, and so when you open it, you still have the 25 years. You're not depending on this tub. You're depending on the individual packaging. With all food storage, uh, heat is really bad for it and reduces its lifespan. Because our, these foods, this is in my, I keep this in my ambulance, and it gets 
warmer than it should. Um, I'm not going to count on it having 25 years. So I'm going to count on this having five or 10 years. And in 10 years, I'm going to eat it and buy another one. Walmart sells this brand. This is a big brand in the Mormon community, and it's, it's a big brand all over. So I was just in the Yuma, uh, Arizona store, and they had an, a whole wrong, long aisle. You'll see some pictures I took of it. I bought this there at the, Amaz at the Yuma store. Um, I, they were out of these. These would probably go really fast because they're so cheap. Uh, but they did have some of these, and they had a lot of the individual cans. So this one is only 21,000 calories, and it's $85. So as you can see, it's not a very good deal. Uh, for $119, 55,000 calories, this is less than half the amount of food, and it's about three quarters of the price. So per ounce, per calorie, this is not a good deal. But maybe this is all you can afford in space. It's still better to have this than to have nothing at all. Another way to do it, rather than spending these large amounts, is to go with the individual cans. Again, you're gonna pay a lot more per calorie, but uh, it's smaller, you can buy just what you need. And I tell you some of the things I bought. This is a um, pancake mix. Again, all you have to have is be able to build a, a, a wood fire, and you get some water, you mix it up, and you got a pancake. And, and with the pancake then, you can make a whole batch for the whole day, and then you can, if you have to be moving around, you could be using it as a bread, as it's for a sandwich. And uh, peanut butter powder. And what a combination these two are. So uh, you've got your pancake mix. You make, you've, got, you've got a source of bread. You're not going to the store and buying bread because now maybe bread costs $10 a loaf. Um, but you've got this. So you can make your own pancake mix and use that as your bread. You can make your peanut mix, your peanut butter. This is a powder, powdered mix. You just add water, stir. It's not bad. I mean, it's, is it as good as regular peanut butter? No. Does it have more sugar and, and oil and fat? Yes. Is this, you're gonna be really, really, really glad you have this if things get tight? Yes, you are. And what I could not locate in my van, I'm running, always running late, I have a, um, an egg powder and it's very expensive too. Uh, so these are all really very expensive. Um, so you couldn't add nearly as many of these. Uh, the, uh, the peanut butter powder was, this is $36. It's a lot of servings. How many servings is this? This is 65 servings, and you know they give pretty small servings, so it's probably more along the lines of 40 or 50 servings. But And the whole eggs was 33, and I think the whole eggs would be the one I would buy first. The pancake powder was only 25, and this is 32 servings. Uh, and I think having some comfort food and something healthy, you know, it's just not gonna be the healthiest stuff you've ever eaten. So having some strawberries or blueberries or banana chips, uh, any of that stuff, I think you'll be really glad to have a, a, a taste treat and the uh, extra uh, vitamins that you're going to get out of real food, uh, strawberries. This is 34. So, of course, and, uh, really what is more practical for most of you is just to keep extras of all the food that you buy. Go to the store and buy some ramen. Buy extra ramen. Go to the store and buy uh, whatever you buy that's kind of quick and that will store reasonably well just buy an extra couple every time. And then you'll add a dollar at a time, two, $5 here, $10 there. And before long, you can really build up a, a good uh, extra supply of food. And so, so now uh, we've talked about how to buy buckets of food, which is what I've been doing. And now we're gonna talk to Brian, which has, who has a lot more experience with buying just a little bit more at a time yep. and has done it a lot. And he'll tell you why he's done it a lot. And, uh, and I think you'll see it might be the best thing for you one or the other of them might work really well for you. So Brian, tell us what you've got here and how you've, uh, why you've been doing it this way. Sure, uh, so one of the big things is I, I'm a big backpacker. And so a lot of this food I can use for backpacking. It's a lot of dried goods, very lightweight. I can take this out on the trail and not be overweight. Uh, the other thing is when I worked with you up in the Sierra, I was three hours from a grocery store. And so because of that, I learned very quickly that I needed to buy a month's maybe even six weeks worth of food if I could, because I didn't want to go down there all the time. It was just a waste of gas. I didn't have the money to do that. So I wanted to make sure I was doing that in an economical and, you know, and I also didn't want to waste my days off going to the grocery store. I wanted to be out backpacking, hiking, things like that. Now, as far as fresh fruits and vegetables, there are certain things that last a long time. So you have apples, potatoes, onions, things like that. Those last forever. A cabbage is also very shelf stable in the refrigerator. 
Uh, and so I would do a lot of those kind of things for the fresh fruits and things like that. But then when you get, you know, that only lasts so long, then you want to start getting into some of these other dried goods. All these things we're talking about today, they're not the 25 years that you were talking about in yours. Uh, they're not good for 25 years, but they are probably good for two or three years, yeah. you know? Yeah. So easy one, starting with breakfast, just oatmeal. I mean, this whole big thing of oatmeal has 30 servings, so 30 days worth of it, and it was about $3. You, we want to have some dried fruits in our oatmeal, so we have... Uh, I always go with raisins because, again, they're just cheap. Beyond that, again, you go with the dried goods. You have your instant potatoes, ramen. I mean, for 10, 20 cents. So, again, you have nuts that you can get. Um, I like banana chips. So those, again, you're just looking for some sort of, like, sustenance for you. So you can get chicken or tuna in these little packets for they're You know, they're kind of expensive for what they are, for the amount that they are. But, yeah. again... You, this is good until 2024. So this has a shelf life of at least three or four years because I probably bought it a year ago. I don't like to do a lot of dairy, so I used a coconut milk powder, powder that I had to get online. You know, in, of course, you can always do pasta, beans, rice. Those are all very, very cheap. But all this stuff is something that I would use every day anyway. I mean, I have some uh, traditional stuffing here. You know, just a, it's, it's like stovetop stuffing. Uh, crackers, I'm gonna eat crackers just on a daily basis anyway. Well, Brian, thanks so much. Uh, you know, I agree completely with your experience. I was up on a mountain, yeah. not as deep and far back as you were, mm -hmm. and I was very lucky. My boss would come along, and he would go into town and shop for me. I'd write a shopping list. I should have had that. Yeah, you should have <laughs> had that. So I didn't have to do this, but, yeah. you know, you've proven you can go mm -hmm. a month and a half or or more, no problem, Yep. with just this way. So Absolutely. you folks can do it, too, and you'll have peace of mind and comfort of knowing you have extra food on hand when you came times to need it yep. and i really think the best bet is the combination get one of the small buckets get some of the number 10 pound cans and uh, between the two of them you can really work out a system that works well mm -hmm. so guys what did you think of our setup so we have the the pre-bought the bucket of food that you can buy or you have like a smaller variety things like that can you imagine doing something like this at home do you think it's even worth it do you need to do something like this let us know in the comments below right so I hope you got something out of this that you don't think we're just crazy nuts, that we're just average people trying to think ahead. Nothing wrong with having insurance. That's all this is, a little extra insurance. So if you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now. So long.